Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope 2020 hasn't been too rough to you guys. And if it has, I hope 2021 will be a lot better to you and to all of us, really. Now, I wanted to make this video because I know a lot of you are probably MMA fans and have been for a long time. And you understood a long time ago that you, you don't have to watch boxing exclusively or MMA exclusively or pro wrestling exclu exclusively like I do. Uh, wrestling and, and boxing, the only two sports that I've watched for a long time. The only two sports because football, I used to watch football and basketball, maybe some uh, baseball. But a while back, it, they just started adding a lot of rules and it got way too political for my liking. You know? I, I want my sports out of politics. Uh, I mean, <laughs> politics out of my sports completely. I do not enjoy watching the NBA. I do not enjoy watching the NFL anymore. No, not at all. But pro wrestling and boxing, they, they're always there. They've always been there. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, wrestling is... Uh, entertainment and I will argue till my death that is that it is a sport and that they are phenomenal athletes at the peak at their peaks performing but MMA I, I always figured there was a, a rivalry between boxing and MMA and there still is that there's a rivalry in fans boxing fans may say that our sport is superior because it's a sweet science it's more technical and MMA fans will say that their sport is superior because it more resembles a street fight. So their fighters are more complete and they could call themselves fighters and that boxers have to call themselves boxers and they can't call themselves fighters even though they are fighting and that they are in a fight. But there's always this rivalry and of course I was in the side of boxing because I always side with boxing no matter what, even still. But a couple things happened this year that made me change my mind on this. Uh, first off, I joined jujitsu class and I really enjoy it. Uh, you don't take punches in the face at all. And um, it's very challenging. I, I, it's not coming to me natural at all. I've been there a couple months and I'm struggling to pick up a lot of the moves and to get better, but it, it, it's a challenge. It, it's presenting a challenge to me which I enjoy, and I wanted to learn jujitsu because I could do stand-up, I could box, but I figured if somebody tackles me to the ground, kind of a fish out of water at that point. But even now, even with just a month or two, I could probably turn them over, maybe um, put in a choke or a kimura on, on somebody that doesn't know any wrestling or jujitsu, I could probably flip them over and choke them out at this point, which I would say most people don't know any jujitsu. So I think even now I could defend myself completely in a street fight if it gets taken to the ground. A couple other things that happened is one of my buddies recommended that documentary Chuck and Tito, the 30 for 30. Now I have ESPN Plus and I, won't, I, I had it all year. I was paying for it. Even when there were any fights, any any sports on it. And I thought, man, there's all these 30 for 30s. There's all these movies on on ESPN Plus that I'm already paying for. I mean, I'm not paying a lot. I'm paying $50 a year. And ESPN Plus is completely worth it. So I decided to watch Chuck and Tito because my buddy recommended it. He's more of an MMA fan than a boxing fan. But we talk both. Uh, mo I would talk mostly boxing to him, and then he would talk MMA, and we we were both um, casuals in each other's sports. So I, I'm the casual MMA guy, and he's a casual boxing fan. So and he recommends Chuck and Tito, and I watched it. I really enjoyed it, and I decided to go a little deeper into the career of these two men, Ch uh, Chuck Liddell and Tito, Tito Ortiz, and I decided to to research. A couple of, of other fighters during that time and number three that happened I discovered Chael Sonnen the bad guy the American gangster if you guys don't know who Chael Sonnen, in, Sonnen is just look him up look up his name and look up a couple of his interviews man he brought charisma he brought promos to mixed martial arts 
during the 90s and the 2000s and he's phenomenal he's a great speaker he he's amazing um may, maybe a, i'd liken him to i don't know maybe a, a prince nasim hamed just his personality um who who else would cut promos on I, I'm, i'll think about it later but he he was just great and I I looked up all his interviews. He's awesome. He's legitimately cutting promos on his opponents, talking great about himself. He says, I'm the reason why Waldo is hiding. <laughs> well, one on one, two on one, or five on one. They will be calling 911. That is the American gangster, Chael Son, and he's just great. So, a uh, couple of his, of his fights, uh, I was watching them, and then. I decided to watch a couple fights on ESPN Plus, and it turns out they have a whole library of UFC, a whole library. So they have um, the whole UFC pay-per-views from I, I believe right now they're at UFC 256, and they have the library until up to, to like 240. So they have the last 25 pay-per-views in their library. Plus, um, ten to fifteen fights of of their greatest fighters. So they have fi- uh, ten fights of Conor McGregor, Khabib, John Jones, George Saint Pierre, and what I where I started was they have a section of their twenty five greatest fights of all time, and I just finished it, and it was great. It was very entertaining. And of course, it's the greatest fights of all time. So after watching that, in the middle of that, I thought, all right, it's time to give this sport a try. And I'm, I'm a fan. I, I Even before, I was a very casual fan. I've even made a couple videos on this channel, a couple videos on Conor McGregor. Uh, I covered, I reviewed the Ring Magazine with Ronda Rousey on the cover. But I was really mad at the zone when... When they decided to hold off Canelo versus Kovalev because Nate Diaz was going to fight Jorge Masvidal and I checked out the fight. It was alright. Uh, it, it got stopped by a cut that really shouldn't have gone stop considering the situation and considering these two veterans in the sport. But um, I got really mad at that and I still stick with the stick with the opinion that they should not have done that and that they should have stuck to their guns. But... Um, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a, um, I've made videos in the past, but now I could consider myself an actual fan, and yeah, maybe a casual fan, because I'm not as hardcore of an MMA fan. Maybe maybe not yet. I don't know, but um, I want to make this video just to tell you guys that um, might not be a big deal to you, but it's a big deal for me, uh, and. Maybe in the future I'll be make, making a lot of videos on MMA versus boxing situations like when James Tony went to an MMA or Ray Mercer or um, Connor fought Mayweather in the situations behind that. So I'm looking forward to those and a couple of my favorite fighters of all time, uh, Rampage Jackson, Fedora Milenko, Robbie Lawler, Matt Hughes, that's from the fights that I've watched and fights that I watched even before this year. A couple of my favorite current fighters are Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz. And last week I saw this guy, uh, Wonder Boy, Stephen Thompson. Man, this guy could fight, guys. This guy could move. He was sticking and moving on that guy. Moving around the ring. Beautiful footwork. Then I went to discover this guy is 58 and 0. That... That guy, he he was a perfect transition fighter for me. Watching as a boxing fan to an MMA fan, man, if you that you guys, if you don't even want to get into MMA or have any interest, but maybe you're a little curious, um, check out Wonder Boy Stephen Thompson. It man, I I think even a boxing fan could look at that and, and say, all right. MMA, it, it's all right. A couple fights that I saw on that 25. Uh, Justin Gaethje versus Eddie Alvarez. Man, 
Mark Hunt versus Bigfoot Sylvia, big boys. Man, those guys put on a show. That might be my favorite fight of all time. And Anderson Silva versus my boy, the American gangster, Chael Sonnen. And th those are all great fights. And um, yeah, a couple couple of, of the highlights that I've seen or uh, that I've experienced so far. Um, I want to know... What are a couple of your guys' favorite fighters, maybe, that are fighting currently? And a couple of your favorite fights of all time. Maybe maybe some fights or fighters that aren't in the UFC. Maybe some of Bellator. Maybe if you guys were fans from the old school Pride days. I do look forward to watching. They, they, have, the, they have the old, the first 10 UFCs. So I might review those shows individually. But I, I look forward to talking to you guys Uh. But this new sport that I just discovered. <laughs> um, thanks everybody for watching and peace.